Let's see if I can finally say a conclusion. This is a Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. And today's video is a different one than I have done in the past, but it's one that I want to do several of in the future. And it is a sunscreen application and review video. So the topic of today's video is going to be the CeraVe Hydrating Sunscreen Sheer Face Sheer Tint SPF 30. And I have the box right here too. This is actually not an empty box from this. It is full with a second bottle, which I purchased after using this like two times. So there's a spoiler for y'all like in the first few seconds of the video. This sunscreen is not without its faults though. I'm getting ahead of myself. I will talk about all of that. The format of this video, I'm going to show you on my bare face application of this sunscreen. So you can see the texture, the potency of the tint, you can see the final finish. And I'm also going to show you like a shot of my face after 10 minutes of it just to have the opportunity to absorb some more and set in place. With this CeraVe product in particular, it reminded me of one of my favorite Bare Minerals products. So I did also show like a comparison between those. And I lastly, I, I have a lot of like shots of my face in this video. I also showed you what the Bare Minerals original powder foundation looks like on top of this sunscreen. And I did pick that foundation especially for this sunscreen. And like, interspersed throughout all of that, I'm going to be talking, of course, about the actual product, the ingredients, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and just a discussion of all of that. So if that sounds interesting to you, please continue watching and let me know if you like this kind of video. If this is your first time meeting me, hello, my name's Sally. I'm so happy that you found me and visited my little corner of the internet here. I would be tickled if you liked me enough to subscribe before you go and give this video a thumbs up. If you do like it, it lets me know what y'all like and it helps me in the ever so elusive algorithm. First, let's talk about ingredients. So this is a fully mineral sunscreen, which is something that I have been trying more lately. Uh, before I would use either mineral or chemical, it didn't really matter, matter to me, but I am experimenting to see if my skin likes zinc sunscreens more. So this is not just a purely zinc sunscreen, but it is a lot of zinc in this sunscreen. It's 5.5 titanium dioxide and 10% zinc oxide. Both of these are physical UV blocking ingredients, so it acts like a shield where the rays just bounce off and don't penetrate deep into your dermis, which is where the, the damage happens. This is a tinted sunscreen, so it also has iron oxides, which is what gives it that peachy skin tone color. Iron oxides are also supposed to have additional benefits of blocking blue light, which is from screens, but it's, it's primarily from sunlight as well where uva and uvb rays are from not to say that there isn't blue light exposure from electronics but i would be more concerned about the sun's blue light exposure <laughs> having the iron oxides in here and having that tint it helps protect from that blue light like i said which what that actually looks like is helping hyperpigmentation and hypererythema not get worse. In addition to blue light protection, the tint offers a cosmetic benefit as well. It's like a tinted moisturizer. So in terms of the coverage of this, let's go ahead and cut to application clips. The label of this product says sheer tint, but the tint is significant. I have tried a lot of tinted sunscreens in my day. I have tried this CeraVe hydrating tinted sunscreen, obviously, but also the Versed Guards Up SPF 35, the Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense, which is SPF 30. I've also tried the First Aid Beauty Weightless Mineral SPF 30, as well as the Elta MD UV Elements, which is a tinted mineral sunscreen. So I have tried a fair number of tinted mineral sunscreens, and this one is by far the most potent in terms of its tint. The First Aid Beauty SPF, for example, the color of it really kind of disappears as you rub it in, so I would imagine that that one is more flexible in terms of range of skin tones that can use it, but with the CeraVe one, the tint is strong and it lasts even after rubbing it in. And because this so happens to be like the tone of my skin, I favor that. But if you have fair skin, this is definitely gonna look dark on you. It's gonna look like you got the wrong shade of foundation. And if you're deeper than medium skin tone, then this is going to leave a cast. The texture of this sunscreen is what I would describe as whipped. It's not exactly 
creamy and it's not like thin or liquidy and within the whipped texture it is also very smooth it doesn't break apart it doesn't feel oily like it has a potential to separate or anything but what i will note is that the finish of this foundation does feel a little greasy and i know that for pretty much most of us looking for a sunscreen the mark of a bad sunscreen is a greasy sunscreen once i reach the end point of me rubbing in this sunscreen it still feels like a little bit of like an oil film on top of my face, which isn't the most pleasant thing. It's not my favorite finish. And I'm not gonna say that this is my favorite tinted sunscreen because it's not, but that feeling after 10 minutes with leaving my face alone, it really does dissipate to an impressive degree. 10 minutes later, this is what it looks like. And there still is a sheen, there is still a radiance coming off of my skin, but it's not unpleasant at all. And I don't even think it looks bad. It's quite nice, actually. Now, is this finish my favorite tinted sunscreen? No, I already told you that. Now, is this finish my favorite drugstore tinted sunscreen? No, it's it's not. I'm going to tell you it's not. The My favorite one is actually currently the Versed Guards Up SPF 35. The Versed sunscreen I do think is better for oily combo skin. It has less of a radiant finish. It's less moisturizing, which means it's not going to... Like you're, you're gonna have to use a moisturizer with it and i'm talking a lot about that sunscreen in this video i do plan to have a dedicated video to that one as well for the CeraVe sunscreen though it doesn't claim to mattify it doesn't claim to be for oily skin the claim is actually for it to be hydrating and the thing is like it's not unpleasant to me i i i can't really explain the je ne sais quoi of how this has that very moisturizing hydrating aspect of it but doesn't bother me because usually that bothers me I think that this just isn't overwhelming. Because this is a hydrating product, I can get away with my kind of skin with using this as my moisturizer and my sunscreen. So I will go in with this as my moisturizer and then I can also even go in with another thin layer of this as like my second layer, which is my sunscreen layer. Because the color of this product is fairly strong, it actually reminds me of a makeup product and that is the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream. Granted, this is already a light coverage makeup product, but just like that, this also has SPF 30 actually. I wanted to compare these two side by side, so I did do that. On the bottom, I'm putting the CeraVe Hydrating Tinted Sunscreen, and then on the top, I have the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Tinted Gel Cream. And as I blend these out, they are very similar. The Tinted Gel Cream actually has a less pleasant texture than the CeraVe Hydrating Sunscreen does. That's because the, the Complexion Rescue, I, I shake it up before I use it too, but it comes out like truly whipped like a mousse. And sometimes when you're rubbing in that mousse, it doesn't, it's not completely even from the beginning. So after rubbing it in, then it becomes even. But the CeraVe texture is very like homogenous throughout. The shade of my Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue is Bamboo 5.5, by the way. It's a different shade than the CeraVe one. I think that the comparable, a more comparable shade in the Bare Minerals would be the shade 3. But as I blend it out, the coverage, I think, is actually very comparable. So if you have ever used this, then that is hopefully something that you can like compare it to in your memories. I also was reminded of this product in particular because it has that more oily kind of finish. I haven't finished talking about all the ingredients yet, so let me just touch on a few more that are in here, looking at the box that I underlined. So this also contains niacinamide. All of these are around like halfway down the ingredients list. It's a little bit long. Um, and honestly, a lot of these names of ingredients are quite chemical and I am not familiar with many of them. I looked up this product in CosDNA. CosDNA breaks down a product by the ingredients and grades them. I haven't used that site a lot, so I can pretty much only recognize if something is glaring, glaringly, bla bleh, glaringly bad, but this looks really good to me overall. It had a lot of green numbers, green like being low numbers, good scores, nothing of concern. So anyway, so standout ingredients. I wanted to mention our niacinamide. Everyone knows about niacinamide these days, but my favorite claims of the ingredient include helping hyperpigmentation and also controlling sebum production. Also halfway down is salicylic acid. This is a BHA. It's a chemical exfoliator that is oil soluble, can help clear out pores. It's an anti-acne ingredient, but it's not like advertised really as an ingredient in this product. So I would imagine the percent of salicylic acid is quite low. I don't know what the percent in this is, but it's not like a marketable percentage, at least that they 
chose to market for this. There's also sodium hyaluronate, holds up to 1,000 times its weight in water for hydration and those iron oxides that I already talked about. Most common way that I use this product is, as I told you, the moisturizer, sunscreen, and tinted base product all in one. However, I actually do like wearing this underneath powder foundation as well because it has that extra moisturized base. Powder foundation buffs so so nicely on top of it. And so I, that's what I actually am wearing as my foundation today. And I'm not wearing any concealer with it because every time I use powder foundation, I forget that I am supposed to put concealer on first. So no concealer today, but here's what my face looks like after buffing in the Bare Minerals Original Powder Foundation. The shade I use is 08 Light. This powder foundation just by itself has a bit of sheen in it. I think it has mica within it, but especially with the sunscreen, it has a very natural, healthy looking sheen. At this point in the video, let me just go over some pros and cons. The first pro I have is the tint. I like this tint because it happens to be, I just won the luck of the draw that it is my skin tone. So that is a benefit for me. It's probably going to be a con for you if you are not within the narrow range of skin tones that this will work for. A second pro for me is that I can cut out a step of my skincare routine essentially in the mornings by using this as a moisturizer and SPF in one. And by cutting out the moisturizer, I'm able to use enough of this product to get sufficient uh, protection. And let me think of a third pro because all good things come in three. Oh, third, third pro is the actual uh, active ingredients that it's a mineral sunscreen. And I do think that my skin likes mineral sunscreens, especially zinc sunscreens, better than at least American chemical filter ingredients. This is a mixed physical sunscreen. So it has both titanium and zinc. And a lot of times when I see titanium and zinc mineral sunscreens, it's like, 4% and 4% or 5% and 5%. But this one is 5.5 and 10%, which honestly these this, thing, this active ingredient percentage is a lot higher than what I would expect for SPF 30 because I've already I have a distinct memory of I think it's the Bear Republic, either the Bear Republic or the Botanicals something botanicals tinted sunscreen. One of those is 4% zinc and 4% uh, titanium and it's also marketed at, as SPF 30. So anyways, my third con is the is the mineral filter ingredients both the high both that they're mineral and the high percent of zinc and I guess also thirdly just a high percentage of both of them. Now for the cons. I think I might have 3 for this too. So first con I'm going to say is the same thing as my first pro, the tint. It's not universal. My second con is going to be something I mentioned and the third con is going to be something new. So my second con is it takes a little bit of time for it to not feel greasy anymore. And even then it might still feel greasy to some people. It's not it's not like a you feel nothing on your face kind of sunscreen. It is fairly lightweight. It doesn't feel like pasty or anything like rubbing it in it, it like where you drag your skin or whatever this has a very smooth texture but it still does have that extra moisturized maybe maybe a little bit oily finish for me that largely goes away after 10 or 15 minutes but it doesn't like completely go away i still feel it a little bit because i use it as my moisturizer i just think that it's my moisturizer and i it has that moisturizer feeling but i'm not going to say that this is the most lightweight thing i've ever used okay the third con is something I haven't mentioned yet and that is that I do not think that this is good for reapplication. Firstly, like imagine reapplying a tinted moisturizer on top of itself like twice or three times a day. Not very pleasant. The tint is one thing that contributes to the con of it not being the best for reapplication but secondly is the texture. This is bouncing off con number two which is the finish. Just adding like so much like hydrating moisturizing just on top of each other it's not it doesn't feel good, you know? So my favorite, I'm gonna mention what my favorite sunscreens are for reapplication that have that super lightweight, almost can't feel it kind of texture. One is the Biore UV Watery Essence, and this is SPF 50, it's a Japanese product. The thing is though that this is a little bit drying. It has it has a like noticeable alcohol smell, and uh, I, alcohol is fairly high up on the ingredients list of this. I like it because it really like, it, it like evaporates 
which is what alcohol does, if it's between me not wearing sunscreen and wearing a sunscreen that maybe is a little bit more drying, then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wear it. My second favorite sunscreen for reapplication is the Claire's Soft Airy UV Essence. Super lightweight, it has a water-based gel texture like right on the label. Yeah, it's just a very enjoyable texture. And then the third one I like for reapplication is this Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. This is absolutely not moisturizing to me, um, in my experience. And because it's so not moisturizing, I think it's good for reapplication. So these are my three favorite for reapplication since I'm talking about how a con of this is that it's not good for that. All in all, this product I do like. I actually would recommend it, especially because it's CeraVe, which I trust the formulation of CeraVe a lot. I feel like I'm saying CeraVe sometimes, CeraVe sometimes, who knows? It's like pecan, pecan, caramel, caramel, tomato, tomato. I guess like final conclusion for me is that I obviously do like it enough to have purchased a second one because I, it works for me and my life and for how I use it. That being said, I did clarify at the beginning of this video that this is not my favorite tinted sunscreen and it's not my favorite tinted drugstore sunscreen either. If you include Versed being a drugstore sunscreen, even though Versed is like 20, how much does it cost? 20, 22 or 23 dollars. I like this because it's accessible. I bought this from CVS by the way. I know it's been a little bit hard to find. It's been sold out like often on, on Ulta's website, but I found this at CVS. I used a bunch of coupons for it. So I ended up getting this. Its original price was like $16, I think, but I ended up getting it for like less than $10. I feel like every time I try to list something, I like can't ever reach the end of the list quickly because I'll say something and I'll like branch off into this other point that I forgot to say and then hit the next one and be like, oh yeah, and then with that, there's this and it kind of like connects to that. So that's just me, y'all. That's me. Let's see if I can finally say a conclusion. This is a... I can't say I can't say a conclusion, can I? I like this. I repurchased it. It's not perfect, but I think it's worth trying. Okay, that's my conclusion. <laughs> please, please, please let me know if you like this video because I want to make more. But I don't want to make more if y'all don't like it. You know? You know? I just want to do this with a lot because I, I always have a question of what does it look like and what does it feel like and will I like it? I want to make these videos to be helpful for y'all because it's the kind of things that I'm searching for all the time. I am wearing these uh, Poly Eye Sea Honey Color Contacts again. They are so comfortable. Like they're more comfortable than my, uh, than the, the prescription contact lenses that I've worn for decade, a decade now. I'm barely decades years old. I can't believe I almost said decades. A cool thing about these now, because we're talking about like sunscreen and all is that it has a UV protective layer and it also has a blue light layer. So that's really, I don't, that's not standard. I'm pretty sure. I'm also really bad, like really bad about wearing sunglasses and I'll just walk into the sunlight of the hot Texas day and just like be squinting all the time. And I'm sure that's not good for my face and probably not good for my eyes either. Is there anything, is there anyone else like that? I just like, I, I feel like I can't be bothered to put on sunglasses, even though it's not something that is bothersome. Anyway, oh my God, I am so scatterbrained today. Thank you for watching. <laughs> I hope y'all have a great rest of your day. And also remember that y'all are my treasure every day. Find the beauty in every day, but most importantly, be kind to yourself. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.